Joe, the first college football playoff rankings are out, and we are going to react to them here. Uh, do I need to list the, the top 12, or how do you how do you want to do this? No, our listeners are smart enough to know what happened. They're, they're smart okay. I mean, I would, I would think that if they're crazy enough to listen to us yell at each other about this, which we're probably about to, um, that they would have done the due diligence to check what the rankings were. They're on Twitter. They're on social media. We'll reference where some of these teams are. All right. So I, I I guess we're just going to debate his here this, but there are some teams in the top twelve that in order I have a little bit of an issue with. I'm going to start okay. off with this. I don't think Georgia has any business being behind Ohio State at the current moment. You hit the nail on the head with the first thing that I was going to bring up, and I, I know that like technically speaking, this doesn't really affect anything because of the way that the bracket seeds. This is going to be a really confusing conversation for the next month. I think there's going to be a lot of you know, convoluted details with trying to explain Ohio State's two, but they're the five seed. That's why it doesn't technically matter, but you're 100% right. It was the first thing and the only thing that I tweeted that the minute that these were released, Ohio State, yes, good win on the road at Penn State, but are we going to discount what Georgia did to Texas on the road? And then also another ranked win that they have over Clemson so far this season, the Alabama loss, we're not moving them back because of how they played in a half of football. That was still a close loss, technically speaking. So, yeah, I'm 100% with you. Not only do they have a better resume, but most importantly, they've got the same damn record. And they've also passed the eye test more for me. I, some people are making excuses because of the Florida game. The, what are we going to ignore the Ohio State performance against Nebraska? There, there's plenty of things that we can turn to for, for making this debate. Well, basically, what you're saying is, is that the loser of the Ohio, of the Big Ten is still not better than the top team in the SEC in your ranking. Yes, exactly. Right. So, with that being said, you're right. Ohio State in the in the college football playoff bracket would be at number five, and Joe they would they would host Boise State. I, I mean, that's an that's another conversation in and of itself, but. I don't think that it's fair that a team that's only played one ranked opponent in Ohio State and or two ranked opponents, you did have a convincing win versus Penn State. But when I look at Ohio State and Georgia here, Georgia has a win over your number five team in Texas, and Ohio State has a win or, or not as a convincing of a win against number six Penn State. So the win that they have, one is bigger. Now, I guess the loss is maybe a little bit less with Bama and Georgia, but I, I would really love to know what the splitting of hairs here was, to be honest with you. Because, I mean, you have you have Georgia that went on the road and dominated your top five team. So basically what you just told me was is that Georgia went on the road, they dominated the second best team in the SEC in your eyes, and you're just not discrediting the Ohio State loss to Oregon. I, 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 do, I do think that, personally, I don't think, I think Georgia should be at two. But I got to yeah. be a little real with you here, too. However, I don't know if it's a massive deal, right? Like, meaning, I yeah, see, I agree I with that. See both sides, but for me, I would still have Georgia ahead of of or of Ohio State here. Uh, Joe, also Miami coming in at number four. Not really anything big there, but they deserve to be there. But I was surprised that they weren't technically above Georgia in this sense because they just hadn't lost. Right. That would be the only thing. But I mean, I thought so, the committee would do that. So the, the committee, one of the things I think this is telling us here with that specifically, and also a number of other things, Sankey and Petiti made a big emphasis and a big stink on strength of schedule being factored into these decisions where these teams are placed. That's the simplest reason for that. So I, I totally get why they would end up being at four, why they're the three seed. I'm comfortable with BYU being back at nine also and being that four seed. Here's one that I'm, I'm a little bit ticked off by, Blake. I am, and I know that you might not totally agree with this, I don't understand why Indiana, we're not talking eye test right now, we're talking resume, performance. They're undefeated. They have played a similar schedule to what Michigan played last season up until this point. They have not lost, and all of their wins are by a significant margin. I believe they have the weakest strength of schedule in the top 10, which is hurting them in this situation. But to have another Big Ten team in Penn State who lost at home and played maybe a slightly harder schedule, but hasn't exactly beaten anyone super formidable, for them to be ranked at six and Indiana at eight, I'm splitting hairs a bit here, 
But that to me is problematic because it also now boxes out Indiana for future rankings if they don't win out and they lose to Ohio State because they're basically being told that they can't do anything more to be considered better than Penn State. Here's the bigger pushback. I got to be real with you. I don't like Indiana at eight, so I'm the opposite of, uh, of you. Are you right think they should now. be further back? Yeah, I mean, Joe, their strength of schedules in the one tens, broad. I, I mean, I get what you're saying, and I know that they're doing something that's significant, but their strength of schedule is really bad. I look at okay in this instance, they're ahead of Notre Dame. I understand Notre Dame has a loss. Bama, Boise State, SMU, A and M, LSU, Ole Miss. I have a massive problem with that. I, I, I think that all of those teams would be favored over them because if you give any of those teams, any of those teams, BYU included, the same Indiana schedule, what what would you say about it? I mean, yeah, they would be yeah. bored about too. But uh, the, yes. the bottom line is with Indiana, Joe, we're over halfway through here. And again, they have not played a ranked opponent. Your Michigan analogy, where I think fair in the beginning of the uh, fair in the beginning of it. Down the stretch, by the time the rankings came out, we're coming off of Michigan absolutely housing Penn State, running the ball 46 straight times and beating a ranked opponent. They haven't beaten an opponent in the top 50, Joe. Not in the top 50 of these power rankings or however you want to put them. So I, I understand what you're saying, but you're comparing Indiana to Tennessee with me in these rankings. You putting them at eight, and you're putting them at Tennessee, who, by the way, they're, I get that their loss is on the road against Arkansas. They also beat, at the time, three ranked opponents. So you're trying to compare to me, like, uh, Joe, Notre Dame has more ranked wins. Bama, SMU, Boise State went on the road. And here's the crazy thing about the Boise State thing, okay? They have a loss, but their loss legitimately is a field goal at the end of their number one team. Okay. At least they're tested. They're so, you're too high on Indiana because of – I'm not I'm not no, too high on Indiana. No. You wanted Florida State in the playoff last year, did you not? No, I didn't. Okay. What's the, well, look, it, okay? Let me retract that. People wanted Florida State in the playoff last year, did they not? Some people did, because yes. Because of what they have done, correct? Because of all season of what they had Hold done. Hold on. That's not comparable, though, to what we're it talking about. It is comparable, about here. Joe, when your strength of schedule and strength of record it is. But it was, that was a very now, unique, about, complicated circumstance, okay. though, why they didn't get in. Okay, fair, but I look at a team like Alabama. Think about this. Outside of Auburn, Alabama has not faced a team with a losing record. So you could say, oh, well, they're undefeated. It's not created equally, brother. It's just not. I, okay, wait, I understand that it is. And the strength of schedule ranking, there's there's different sources for that. The um, I'm blanking on there. One of them has them at 81st. Some of them have them in the 110s. It's, it's a varying degree. It's definitely the worst of these top 10 teams. I would think that I don't think any of the teams that you mentioned would be favored over them. I think they would all be pickums. I don't think Boise State at all, though. Like to to be very clear, I don't think Boise State at all would beat Indiana. I I don't. I think that that they would well, be completely but, overmatched. But if they we're played, talking about strength of schedule, again, okay, if, we're, if we're talking about strength of schedule, we're not doing our power rankings debate here. We're talking about like which teams have put together the best resumes and look the best in doing but, it. But, Indiana but can't help point. who they played resume. against. But I get it. But, I, I I understand. Well, when you that. don't have good, when you don't have good opponents, the next thing that we can measure is game control. How often are you leading, and and by how much are you leading by? And they're dominating and blowing out every single team that they faced off with. Again, I'm not trying to make my case here that I think Indiana goes on to win a national championship, but for the uh, for the the lot, I'm just trying to say here, it's very specific to Penn State. It's very specific to Penn State. This is less to a Tennessee. More to do with Penn State. For Penn State to be at six with their only loss coming at home. At home. They lost at home to Ohio State. I get that they lost to the number two ranked team. It's like this weird toothpick tower that has been built where there's not really a lot of logic that builds a strong base for it. What I'm just trying to point out here is like why the hell is Penn State? I, I would move up Tennessee to six and I would move up Indiana to seven and Penn State should be eight. Last thing on me with Indiana, I, I would not take Indiana over Tennessee, Bama, A&M, LSU, Ole Miss. I, I, I wouldn't do it. I, I'm not taking Indiana over okay. them. You can say the losses, but 
uh, again, I, I, losses aren't created equal to me. Wins aren't created equal to me when you have the schedule in that. In reference to Penn State, I mean, Joe, they're, they're, they lost by seven to, to the number two team in the country. Like, if we're gonna, okay. What's then, their next best okay, win? What's, well, what's their next best for, win? Okay, hold on, hold on, stop. What's your excuse for Texas then? Texas's loss, though, comes again. Actually, that's a very good point. That's a very, it's actually a very, so, very good point. I don't so, disagree with that. I think so Texas again, arguably is too high as well. So again, but who do you put above Texas? So you're we're that's sitting a good point. here. We're sitting here like debating five through twelve, okay? And you're making all this team going on about Penn State. Well, well, Joe, uh, Texas got their asses beat by the number three team, while one team got beat by seven at home against the number two team. Like, I mean, there comes a part here where if I'm Penn State, I'm looking at this and saying, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're at the one-yard line, almost about to take a lead. And they are. Yeah, but you got to finish, though, man. Like, we can't. Hold on, hold on. (laughs) Texas got their shit beat in. Texas got their shit beat in. And you're now going to have to compare to me what the difference is. So I understand what you're saying about Penn State. I don't mind where Penn State is. I got to be honest with you. I don't. I I legitimately don't. Because I can make that same argument argument about Texas right now. That's just the truth. I think Texas has looked very different on a week-to-week basis. Separate from their losses, I think they've looked different from their how they've played on a week to week basis. Any other teams that, that catch your attention here that you're too high or too low on? I hate SMU at 13. I absolutely hate it. That they're too high. They're way too high. I, I completely agree. I think that there is so much BYU and SMU are in this incestuous relationship where they just keep bolstering each other's resumes and proper propping each other up like i i don't get it like it, it's just this weird circle that keeps getting brought up well well byu beat smu well smu's loss came to byu and that's this weird merry-go-round you keep hearing but outside they of those did, games who did byu point. beat and who did who did smu beat well that's the same argument for indiana oh, okay, uh, we're done talking we're talking we're done talking about indiana we're done talking about indiana it, we're gonna it go all down comes hole. down to it's contradictory it, all of it's a contradictory part of this, okay? In the sense of that they're putting SMU there to keep BYU above BYU. I mean, for be above Boise State. Because if Boise State's ranked ahead of them, they don't get that number four overall seed, right? Like, that doesn't happen. So, yeah. I, look, with, with SMU being there, I think that 12 and 13, Boise State and SMU being where they're at is a flat-out joke. Because you cannot convince me, Joe. Is Texas A and M a better team than SMU and Boise State? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay. But the problem is, hold on, hold on, hold on. What about LSU, Ole Miss? Um, uh, that's probably about it. The rest is probably the rest is probably strong. about it. I mean, m- maybe. Uh, I mean, I-, I think Colorado and Boise would be an interesting matchup. But I- I- again. I get that you got to put them at twelve. I get you got to put them in at twelve in the playoff. You're putting them at twelve in your ranking. You're putting SMU at thirteen in your ranking. You cannot convince me that the eye test has told you, okay? Which, by the way, they came out tonight. I don't know if you heard. They came out tonight and saying this is by eye test. There's no way on God's green earth that you can look at A and M's defensive line and tell me it's by eye test. And before we before we recorded this, I'm yeah. listening to the guy of the committee. He's like. We're going by eye test. You're a buffoon if you say that. And uh, look, I get that. I get that SMU has that Louisville win as well. But like, that's really their only reputable big win. Pitt should not be ranked where they are after the way that they got their asses kicked. I mean, they should not be ranked at 18. They should be much further down. Pitt was a was a total Bouguet's highly ranked team. Well, and here's another one. You got Missouri at 24. Yeah, what the hell? And no Van- and I get that they beat Vandy. I don't even care about putting in Vandy. You know who I would have put there? Who? South I would Carolina. have put in South Carolina. There's too because- many teams with, with better records, not resumes for South Carolina to no, get in there. Sadly. About from- I'm not that I'm just I'm I'm just rationalizing. That's not uh, my again, thing. I know that here's what they don't want to do. 
they don't want to put too many Big Ten or SEC teams in there, right? That's they don't want to do that. Here's mm-hmm. the fact. Here's the point, though, Joe. I think South Carolina beats Pitt, Kansas State, Colorado, Washington State, Louisville, Clemson, Missouri, Army. But okay, so part of the part of the problem is here, though, and I don't disagree with what you're saying. Is that this isn't a power ranking like you no, might do, though? No, but the eye test, if we're going based off a of resume and eye test, so you're saying, okay, hey, they're what? They're six and three, five and four, what? Or no, what are they? I, I don't remember their record. They're but six and three, five and three. If okay, I think six they and lost three. to th- they lost by three to number fifteen. They lost by two to number eleven. They who was the other one that they had in here? That they, they got smoked by Ole Miss. They got smoked by Ole Miss. Okay. That's their losses. That like you're trying to now so, convince me. You, you got to come in here now and convince me that anything that Pitt did last week. I mean, it's again. I'm going to keep saying this every week, Joe. It's not created equally. It's, yeah, Pitt, it, it just isn't. I'm very. There's two things that I'm very against this ranking cycle, and I'm sorry to ACC and Big Twelve fans. I do not think that the ACC and the Big 12 is strong enough this year to have two or or more teams in. So, like, the ACC has Clemson, Pitt, Miami, um, Louisville. They've got four teams. They shouldn't have four teams in there. It should be Louisville. Clemson should not be ranked. Pitt should not be ranked. There should be more SEC and Big Big 10 teams. There 100% should be. We've shit on them all night on this segment. Is there anything that you love that they did? Very or rarely like they did. Yeah, I mean, I, I got you mentioned at the beginning. The one thing that I like is where Miami is placed. I think that they're in the driver's seat to firmly sit in that spot and to be the three seed, and they shouldn't be anything but the three seed. And I would argue if they go undefeated, they're co- actually th- the problem is is that they're not going to play. They're going to. I think they're going to smoke SMU in the in the ACC championship game and. I don't know if that's enough to move them up a spot. Um, they don't. That's probably the only thing. Miami doesn't really need to matter. I mean, you're you're playing for seeding at that point. Yeah. Um, God, I, I I really don't like. Jog, here's a hot take. You ready? Mm-hmm. I would have put Tennessee at five. Based off of uh, the. Rest- based off of the resume and teams that they've played so far, again, because I look at Texas, okay, I look at Penn State, and then you have Tennessee. Texas does not have a ranked win. So Tennessee's only ranked win is against Alabama, though, right? So they beat a top 10 opponent. A top 11 opponent. Okay, top 11 opponents. Don't We're fighting over semantics. I mean, you got Texas to, to for well, what it's worth – you got uh, – don't give me the transitive property. Well, Alabama lost to Vandy, and then Texas beat Vandy by three. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. I, I would argue, though, that's fine to have that take on Tennessee, but my, my counter argument to that is it's not going to matter in two weeks when they play Georgia because, I, I, I mean, I personally think that they're going to lose that game on the road at Georgia, but so then they're going to have two about, losses. The, here's a problem with that. The problem is, is that you don't have any. You cannot project in these. These are not projections. You're I know, talking, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not projecting and saying that they should be ranked saying, low. Not, I'm just saying in a couple of weeks it doesn't matter. Yeah, but that's what you're saying. In fairness to what you're saying right now, though, it, Joe, seventh, like seventh. Can, can I? But uh, let me bring this bring this up though. And I know that you don't like me getting ahead of myself here. If they lose to Georgia. They legitimately will only have one. I'm not having win. that conversation because a loss uh, to Georgia, to, a, a loss to Georgia to me to means what exactly? You lost to the SEC champion. Okay, it's good for you. Good for you. Good, lo- good losses are an important part of the discussion, but wins are still the most necessary tool. They had a very easy SEC schedule. They arguably maybe had the easiest SEC schedule. Oh no, it's been Texas. Uh, Texas okay, is Texas. Texas. strength of schedule. Yeah, I mean that's my point. Like that's you're talking about resume and eye test. Okay, well, here's an eye test for you. Texas is struggling on the road in Nashville. Struggling. And and now you're trying to convince me that a Florida team, with all due respect to Florida, is battling. Like, Joe, I, I don't I think that Florida wins a solid win considering what they did to Georgia and Tennessee. 
right? Like, I mean, that's still yeah. solid. So to the point is, think about this. That would be Texas's best win. That's that's a fair thing to bring up. That's a definitely a fair thing to bring up. I mean, we're going to go in there, Michigan. Joe, we're going. No, we're- that Michigan win is not worth. You're right. <laughs> Michigan probably is the Michigan. I think to what you just brought up, and I guess we can close out with that is that. Yeah, I'd probably have Tennessee ahead of. Uh, I'd have Tennessee in that Texas spot. I'd have Texas at seven. Okay, I God bless it. The world is changing. All right, all right. Coming on the show, agreeing with me. That's all I got. Okay. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent off your first deposit. That is a fifty percent welcome bonus. Bet online, where the game starts.